I know PvP in this game is meme tier. Very, very few people play it, so this is not a guide. Just a showcase of how different end game and balance can exist in PoE. In short, the build gets tons of HP, mitigation, recovery, and some damage avoidance. The biggest thing in the whole build is Progenesis with 168% increased Flask effect, which triples the effective life of the build, paired with a lot of life recoup to over sustain the life loss over time from it. Excess life recoup alone can sustain a lot of damage, but being over 4 seconds, it is a slow mechanic that is still weak to huge burst damage. In the previous 3.20 patch for instant recovery, I only had the 6% life recovered per flask used from Pathfinder, and the exotic combination of the benched 15% life leashed from damage taken mod on flask and legacy winter which makes all life leech instant, including that mod, for a total of 16% life recovered instantly. In the current 3.21 patch, Blood Notch grants the most recovery, paired with the ES mastery every hit stance, and because Progenesis already takes 67% of life loss from hits over time, the remaining 33% of hit damage taken instantly is fully covered by any roll blood notch because 40 to 60 percent of hit damage is recovered instantly so normally only one shots can kill the bill more layers that help against one shots are kept spell suppression immortal coal arctic armor and ruby flasks while also taking other damage type as fire the life loss over time from progenesis is not damage over time, so you cannot mitigate it by leafy shade and such. The servers run at a fixed 33 ticks per second, and each tick the healing effects are calculated first. Then, the life loss from progenesis is subtracted. This is very similar to when you run Righteous Fire or Blood Rage, and you always miss a tiny bit of life. When you take insane amounts of damage that doesn't one-shot you, it is possible for the accumulated life loss to bring your life so low each tick, that at the point you die from the combination of that and the hit damage you still take instantly. Currently the meta exploded totem builds from Crucible League is one of the few things that has enough damage to do this. If you are wondering how GG Nox compares, it is a lot weaker against burst damage because the lack of mitigation and instant recovery. Against high burst damage opponents, it is still somewhat worse to have the essence crafted fire avoidance mods and elusive from withering step. Any form of stat based flask charge generation is disabled in most PvP arenas, Sarn Arena being the only exception, so this is where I usually play the build. Without flask, GG Noobs is still better against one shots but the recovery from Blood Notch and Recoup is still better in other cases. The biggest game in PvP is trying to remove the most resist from your opponent and as a tank trying to prevent that, and this rabbit hole goes really deep. Since Aegis players have access to tons of elemental penetration and the best way to counter that is to take damage as scales damage by the Divine Flash Keystone or another element that you can mitigate better. DPS characters are aware of that, and they are trying to cover it by rare sources of chaos penetration or applying wither. The merge of 320 brought a game changer, the original sin to standard, which can be only countered by CI or the Templar exclusive ascendancy node Searing Purity, only available from Forbidden Jewels. By moving from Pathfinder to Templar, I avoid taking 4 times the damage from anyone owning the ring, but I lose automatic flask generation and flask charge mod, which I make up by using the traitor keystone, but the biggest thing is losing 30% flask effect, plus they removed 10% from the tree in 3.21, which means progenesis mitigating only 67% of damage, instead of 76 that I had with 208% flask effect before, or losing 33% of effective HP. Furthermore, ruby flasks only have 58% less fire damage taken instead of 70%.
However, enemies dealing chaos damage can still use fire and lightning penetration when you use searing purity. Original Steam has a debuff icon, so if you don't see it and they are not withering you, it is still worth to swap to get Mohawk Subtle Shield from Divine Flesh. Keep in mind damage taken as sources don't change. If you already altered the damage from Chaos to Elemental, using Divine Flesh on top will not alter it back, so that shield is still always safe to use. Smart opponents will realize it is still better to stay elemental, but you have answer for everything. Dorian users getting your lightning resist to minus 200%, just take it as fire. Apparent cold damage dealers, heat it up. Pure fire damage dealers, just mitigate it or add 1k to your life. If someone doesn't bother to do the block chance reduction gem recipe, you can just remove most of their damage with block. You must surely fall over to damage over time, right? Just swap in Indigon and an Enduring Mana Flask or a Life Flask on top, and even the most broken dots are dealt with. Life regeneration from Inquisitor Consecrated Ground has not much effect on your tankiness, so you can convert it to Rage Regen and activate Berserk to take 20% less damage. The Solaris Pantheon takes care of most critical damage, except for one-shot crits, but the easy answer is Balance of Terror Jewel. You just have to cast Enfeeble manually, or if you are getting heavily cursed, even having a lot of reduction, you can cast this pair for curse immunity. Shock immunity can be achieved from flasks most comfortably, Tempest Shield if you are using Winktar, or the Jewel and casting conductivity. The jewel still triggers the immunities even if you cast it without a target. Progenesis only applies to red life, so any additional layers you may have mana, ES, or ward are much less worse to scale in this build. In the 3.20 patch, me and my friends Empyrean and Bazooka Tank made the animated guardian Bob, who deals 100 billion DPS and I PvP'd it from this tank build. I was able to tank it for quite a while, with a combination of crit immunity, overcapped resist so their curses didn't affect me, and some sneaky block, but as there was not enough instant life recovery available then, they eventually got me. While triggered movement skills usually help prevent some damage, I choose not to use them because running away is not a tanking strategy. Even though I'm on Standard League, I only have a few legacy stats in key positions, such as 4% higher life on rings than normally possible, using Conqueror's Potency Jewel for higher mitigation, Arctic Armor Enchant, and the Immunity Jewel, which still has a chance to go core, I think. The big legacies like Winter and Rumi doesn't help avoid the threats that kill the character. And my Butcher's Eye is also redundant since Blood Notch provides most of the recovery the build needs. There are a few new wall skins that have potential to push tankiness further, but they require a lot of time and swaps to pull off and very situational. Let me know if you want to PvP me, preferably in Standard League Sarn Arena, but I can also accept 1v1s, but my flasks are very limited duration there. If you like this type of content, subscribe to let me know if I should make more. Thanks for watching.